What a beautiful view. Holy smokes. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm uh, here in right in the middle in the heart of uh, busy New York um, on the Upper East Side here. Let me let me see if this will work. How is let me see. How is that? that works. That's good. Oh, good. Okay. <laughs> Oh yeah, that is a very pretty view. Right? Yeah, <laughs> I'm very lucky to to be up. How in the high up are you? I'm on the 45th floor. Okay. Yeah, you yeah. can really see everything. I'm so <laughs> jealous of you right now. You have no <laughs> idea. <laughs> really, I'm seeing my friends up, you know, in, with with gardens and backyards, and I'm jealous of them. So it's always grass <laughs> yeah. is always greener, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Welcome everyone to the Miss Art World podcast. Thank you for joining. Uh, we have our wonderful co-host Samuel Cooksey with the Samuel Cooksey Projects. You can Hello? find it's projects with an S, right? Maybe. Oh, okay. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> He's I working on so. multiple projects. I think it's just, just the one. Samuel Cooksey Project because it had an S. Oh, project. Um, you can find him on Instagram. He has he has his own podcast. Samuel Cooksey Project. Oh, yes, Cooksey Project. <laughs> Today's guest, we have a New York-based artist, Michelle Sakai. Welcome. Thank you so much. Hi. Michelle, uh, before we get started, share with everyone where they can see your work. Like, what's the best place to get a visual on your work? Probably Instagram, um, at Michelle Sakai Art. And my last name is spelled S-A-K-H-A-I, Michelle's two L's. And I'm also on my website, michellesakai.com. Perfect. So tell us a little bit about your background and how you got into art. Well, I actually uh, started, you know, as soon as I could hold something in my hand, uh, writing material, any kind of writing material, I, you know, started drawing, painting, um, first with watercolors, then at 13 into oils, and then, you know, always been an oil painter since. Um, now it's progressed, you know, changed a bit with working with metal leaf, as I do now, the gold, silver, copper. Um, so it's, it's evolved, but um, that's how, it, yeah, I first started very early on. I was just going to say, your work is stunning. For people that are listening, and maybe... Um can't look at your work right now uh you do very large scale pieces um would you consider them abstract yeah i'm kind of a cross between an abstract um artist but because i was a plein air landscape painter for over 20 years um i i i do bring a lot of um figurative aspects into my work. So um, right now I have a show going on called Garden of Peace and it's all very floral. Um, so that's a bit more realistic than what I'm used to be used to doing. Um, so I've had many different series, some more abstract than others. Right now it just happens to be not as abstract, but um, I do have that as well. And my work um, I do have pieces anywhere from the smallest is a 12 by 12 square um, to, you know, I've done 30 feet, you know, much, much bigger. Um, but th I do have smaller pieces as well. And then how many pieces normally come in a series? That you do? Um, all does... different. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it's all different. I think it, it's just, you know, I work very organically, intuitively. Nothing is planned out. Um, even with the show, I didn't really know what I was going to be showing until month before when I started working on this series um, to see what, and it actually was all during COVID. So it was um, interesting. It's not like I sat there and I said, oh, I'm going to paint gardens and flowers. And, you know, it was like, if you remember, you know, with the start of this, you know, the pandemic, it was um, very dark times and, it, but yet it was spring, 
you know so it was like so interesting because like here flowers are blooming you know it's still spring but we're forgetting it's spring you know so it was like just trying to bring a bit more light into the world when it was you know when it was so dark um but it wasn't planned and um that's how i i gotten to um a more floor and i'm i'm looking at i don't know our viewers gonna be able to see this video because i'm i could show you a piece that um i'm talking about that became this right here um which is very floral oh, that's pretty. and um i mean lately i've been getting the you know oh your work is starting to look a lot like Klimt's and are you inspired by Gustav Klimt's and and I am so um you know I, I guess it came through during the series. When you work with metal leaf because I'm not an artist how mm -hmm. does how do you put it on it's not paint right you just kind of like lay it on? I do so it, it's it's for those of you out there listening that's probably worked with leafing it's it's you know how um difficult it is to get the leafing onto the canvas because it's so fragile. Um, so, you know, I, I sit there with tweezers sometimes to just get each piece on, mm -hmm. but I do layer my whole canvas first before I begin painting over it. Um, and then many times I add more leafing over it. So it's several layers of paint, leaf, paint, leaf, and- You have to glue um, it? I do, yeah, there's an adhesive. Yeah, there's a glue. Um, that I use and yeah I, I mean I love love working with it and, and and you know with oils it's just it's a lifetime of learning the material and um, I mean I'm, I'm, I'm always learning something new with oils and that's what's so great about um, working in that medium because it's just it's so you know it's so deep and um, there's so much to to learn from it. So, you know, unlike watercolor or acrylics, which I've, I've also played around with in, in the past, but. And do you still do any watercolors or no, not really? Um, so right before co the pandemic, um, I was still teaching at um, the Harlem Hospital and I work with children there. So we were using watercolors in all of the classes. Um, it's one of the only hospitals that has an art room. So we're lucky to, to have that experience. And um, it's just easier with the, with kids, you know, to be work with the watercolors. So that's why I chose that medium. Um, well, and it doesn't get all over the place. It's a good one to exactly. be like, here, paint. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. And... exactly, yeah, yeah. I don't have to explain to your parents what happened. Yes, yes. I read on your website um, that you believe and trust in the energy of the creative spirit. And I feel like that is very in tune to a lot of the work that you are doing. Yes, very, that's, it's, it's, it's true. <laughs> um, I, I definitely do connect. Um, so I think it's a couple, you know, it's, it's a couple of things, but um, I, you know, having, you know, having a Reiki background and um, a background in all sorts, of, all sorts of spiritual work, um, I definitely bring that into my work. Um, so, you know, before I work, I take, I take time to just um, meditate and go within and I can't, and I just channel and let whatever um, it is come through me and onto the canvas. So um, I don't typically start with any ideas or forms or shapes. It just, I just allow, um, I work with my breath when I work and it's really just, um, it's like, I, I just kind of put myself kind of to the side and just, um, or when I say myself, I mean like, you know, my ego self and then just allow um, my, higher self just come through and and um and i'm, I'm kind of i am just the, the, the channel you know between my between the work and and myself so you said reiki for the people that don't know what reiki is can you explain that sure yes um it's a healing modality that um you basically um you can call it 
chi, life force, um, the universe. I mean, there's many different words for, the, you know, um, in Ayurveda, they, they, they call it um, life force as well, or, um, but it's, 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 the, it's the force within all of us uh, that um, really keeps, you know, anything alive that has it, you know, um, in Japanese, we say chi, uh, and I think in Chinese as well. Um, forget now <laughs> but um it's it's is working with that to heal ourselves and others so um you know you could reiki anything you could reiki animals babies objects i mean anything and so i do reiki my work as well um and yeah i think that that you know comes through in my in in my pieces yeah um, so we have, or at least I have never interviewed an artist that uses, um, like meditative or breath to create work, um, for artists that are interested in those techniques, how would you suggest, um, like doing research or are there techniques that you can share with our listeners that help you? that you would um, suggest for other artists to try? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, for me, it's not like I, you know, studied up, up on how to, you know, in, in, to um, merge, you know, meditation and art. It's kind of, it was just very intuitive for me because I, I do believe that art is healing. And um, I think, you know, and not just art, but all, you know, creativity. And, um, you know, for all the dancers and singers and, you know, writers out there that, you know, it's, it's, we, we do these things, I think, really in turn to heal ourselves and hopefully, it, you know, that in turn can heal others. Um, so I think just getting quiet and um, connecting with, with the deeper part selves of ourselves and um, being able to, you um, consciously feel what you know we're, what we're feeling in our bodies and sometimes um because when I work it's 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 all very um authentic you know I'm not if, if I'm feeling a certain way I'm not trying to change my feelings so let's say I do have um feelings of sadness or anger or fear that come up in my and and you know what I do is I don't I don't try and um you know, put those feelings to the side or think of positive thoughts, you know, it's like, um, I actually go deeper and, and, and ask myself, um, you know, why am I feeling this, feeling this way or, or not, or just, just connecting with it and just giving space to that. Um, I, I just, and, and, and for me, allowing those feelings to rise to the surface and come through me and into my work is giving space for that and um, I mean, I find it tremendously healing and really for myself and why I keep working. Um, but, and, and, I, and that's what I call transformative art because, um, you know, allowing, allowing that to come through us, you know, in our busy day-to-day -day lives, we're, most of us are always going outwards and we're not going inward. So, you know, immediately the first thing we do in the morning is grab our phones and check Instagram, right? So it's like having the moment to actually sit down and and feel what we're feeling um and not to say you need to you know, you know write down you know go through a whole thing of um you know reflecting and but like just just giving the space for it you know and um so for me it's that's you know that's how i find i think anyone can connect is um just paying attention to to that and allowing it to come out whether it's through writing or singing or painting or, you know. Um, and um, the, I, I actually, there was um, a time in, uh, I, I worked at this, I did a workshop at the San Francisco Spiritual Center. And we were in a room with um, um, what they're called angel partners. And I don't know if we have that in New York City, but um, it's, you know, there were people that were partnering up with um, others that were going through the, the death process and um, the workshop was to uh, paint our fears 
and in, you know in that moment it's like well you know how could we help these these people that are going through the dying process paint you know paint their fear of death and um by doing that it, i mean it was very it was very transformational i mean i felt so many people in the room. we had surgeons in the room we had and you know they've never picked up a paintbrush before and it wasn't that it wasn't the point of painting it was just it was the it was just being in touch with our emotions and facing our fears because i believe through facing it you know you can transform it but if we're if we don't face it we just keep putting it to the side and keep distractions and instagram and going out and you know all these things we're we're not we're not connecting with what our deeper emotions and fears um are so and even past trauma, you know, um, and it's it's amazing how sometimes when you're just sitting there alone, um, and all you have is yourself and your emotions, how you can th things come up, you know, maybe trauma that you never thought about was trauma or from your in childhood and you blocked it, um, all of a sudden appears and comes up. I mean, I think. Um, you know, when we sleep at night, we have dreams and those are moments where we, maybe we karmically have this, you know, these experiences that help us um, um, grow and evolve. But I think to, to, to do that in our waking hour as well is just as important. Um, so, you know, yeah, that in a nutshell is, <laughs> sorry, I'm going off of it, but um, no, it's fascinating. Yeah, especially the, the I, I am really curious to uh, get like an idea of what people would paint when they, or like what the art would look like when they would have to paint their fear of death. Yeah, and, yeah. and, and not, not to sound like, you know, to be dark about it. I think like, um, it's interesting because when people let go of the idea of painting something beautiful or what is beautiful to them, you actually, I mean, there's so many paintings of mine that, you know, I've had, I've, I've tear, you know, tears of sadness to tears of joy, you know, in the same painting. And I think what's beautiful is like, once you release all of, all of this and let it out, you'll be amazed at what beautiful, what uh, a beautiful, you know, piece of work you can actually create um, because you're just letting it out and it transforms. It really, really does. And, um, and, and in the room that, you know, that's what was like kind of magical to see everyone um, just pour their everything out and no one was there to judge each other or each other at work or anything. And, um, and then, you know, while they were working, you could see it was it was evolving too. The painting was changing also as their emotions were changing. Mm -hmm. So um, it may have started out, you know, a certain color and then it went to a different color. So, um, and then I, you know, I do that work with, with kids and I think with kids, they're just, they're very honest um, or it, they don't have as maybe as many as, you know, more blocks as, you know, as you get older and you, you know, you you may want to not be so honest, <laughs> but yeah. with kids, they're so pure, you know? Um, so it's so transparent, um, which is, you know, nice to, nice to see, but, um, you know, we could, we could do this all in our own times and we don't have to be artists. Yeah. And art, as you've already said, is a very like spiritual thing to begin with because Absolutely. you're, you're basically, to me, it feels like you're kind of putting yourself, on that piece of canvas um, totally totally and what's so what's so interesting as an artist to see is that people's responses to certain pieces of my work and it's no coincidence that i have people that are connected to some work that maybe were going through the similar things that i was or feeling the same things that i'm feeling maybe more currently and they connect with that piece um especially when i did the arcana series which um, i recreated uh, my version of the um, of the major arcana cards in tarot um, and I went through each card and translated that into my own version and and the people that were drawn to certain cards it's like it's just no coincidence to me it's no coincidence you know yeah is that your favorite series that you've done um probably um because um it took me a year to create and i wanted each painting to be very authentic so i i 
only painted it if I was experiencing that card. Mm -hmm. um, so I, there's only one of, I mean, all my paintings are one of a kind, but in, the tar in that especially, it's like there's only one piece per card. So um, to me, it was, it, it's definitely more dynamic and more intense um, of, of a series than others. Um, and, and it was so interesting because, you know, there were certain paint, certain cards like the hangman, I don't know how familiar you are, which, which with, with tarot, but like that card in particular is about being in between. Um, and you're kind of just hanging to kind of, to go within to, and find the answers and, um, and you're, it's an in-between stage. And I remember the painting I created for that was so unlike what I normally would would make and it was not me like if someone were to see that they wouldn't think I, I painted it so mm -hmm. it was interesting what came through for me in some of these pieces um, and then there were paintings like the Wheel of Fortune I did that is still one of my favorites and um, yeah what does I the mean Wheel of Fortune represent? Um, so the Wheel of Fortune card um, mm -hmm. is about uh, so, you know, you ask, it's interesting with these cards too, because you ask different people and some people have different versions of their, how, how they experience it. Um, mm -hmm. For me, it was about um, something much bigger than, the force much bigger than, than us. And, you know, like, you know, what, what controls seasons and, um, you know, that, um, I don't want to use the word God, but like that God energy of um, something just much larger than us and um, out of our own control, um, and it's like, well, how do you paint that? How do you how do you express something like so big, right? <laughs> like that's that's you know so limitless and 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 it goes way beyond the human physical form. Um, and so it was interesting, like for me, how I can translate that. And and what's funny is like if I did that painting and I spent you know. X amount of time making it. It's like when I thought about making it again, I was like, I would make it so differently. You know, it's like, yeah. So it's like we're, you know, I think it just shows how much we're constantly changing um, ourselves without, you know, we we may not be conscious of how you know how much we're we're also changing. And so yeah, it was it was a really um, interesting experience for me to. For me to paint that and I, I really enjoyed it. Are they big pieces? Or are they like smaller pieces? They're, they're, they're a bit bigger. Um, I think the smallest one I have is about like 24, two feet by, you know, three feet or so, two or two by four. And then I have bigger ones that were like the Fool, um, which is six feet and I actually ended up donating that to the Harlem Hospital Children's Floor because when the pandemic when that happened I was you know it was done and I thought it was a great way to just um, have a painting of mine there and it was the fool and the fool is is the number zero card which is about connecting with our childlike selves being playful you know starting from the beginning that you know um, going out into the world with this you know, like how children do, you know, playfully and trusting um, and that kind of energy. And I, and it was a, I ended up doing this painting with lots of stars and it was so colorful on a silver background. Um, and so I thought it was a perfect painting to have on the children's floor at, at Harlem. That's cool. That makes yeah. me so sad because I'm sure you said that you um, teach a class there, an art class, and because of COVID, I'm assuming that you can't go and work with the kids, but the kids are still at the hospital. It's true, yeah. So we did some videos um, okay. for the kids that they could do and, you know, watch in their beds, and, and I, g I give them, like, a little tutorial, um, but I'm sure, you know, in time, we'll maybe be able to go back, um, but yeah, it is uncertain with all of that. In New York, is it still very strict? Um, I think, yeah, yeah, it is. I, but you know, I find everyone pretty, well, I mean, what, I, I don't go out that much, but I do see, you know, everyone wearing masks and o obeying, you know, the rules and. 
So then when you did the spring series, are you done with the spring series? No, my Garden of Peace is, is happening right now at Hofstra okay. University. That's where I graduated from in Long Island, um, where I got my bachelor's in fine arts. And so the show is happening there right now until the 22nd. Um, I've done a couple of workshops and um, talks there already. And so anyone is welcome to go on campus. You don't have to be a student to go and see the work. Um, and again, if you, if you go on my website, michellesakai.com, I have um, always updates on where my current shows are. And you have a book too. I uh, do. Yeah, I'll show it to you. Um, it's called Awakening. Awakening. And you can order it on my website. Um, here it is. <laughs> you just pull it out. <laughs> And I'll have so, to tag, because I found a video of you like going through all the pages and it was really cool. So I'll have to put that in so people can see the whole thing. Thank you. Yeah, I, I actually, yeah, I was, as my, my, a couple of uh, friends and clients asked me, can you show us the inside of that? So I finally did a little video, but it's basically 200, a compilation of 200 of my paintings, um, which is not all of them, but um it's enough and and then uh personal quotes that i have written while i'm working so a lot of times when i'm painting i have you know words come up and um certain ideas so i just write them down and um that's what i included here in my book can you because uh, samuel hasn't seen that video could you show maybe a a page or two sure so oh, for our audience <laughs> as well yeah so my forward is, is there, and then it starts with um, a quote here, and then, um, oh, actually, here's my forward, and then. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's beautiful. And so there's a lot of different, and it just, it's, you know, different series, different works. Um, these are my 12 by 12s that I have, and that's also on view currently at another university in Texas, uh, Mary Harden Baylor, uh, where I was going to do a talk right before COVID. I, I was actually on the plane, I landed, and then got an email from them saying we have to cancel. Oh, so, no. did you yeah. just hop on the plane again and go home? I ended up spending like three days in Texas, but then they started shutting down. So then I got, I was worried that I wouldn't be able to make it back. So yeah. Um, yeah. And then here are my florals. I'll show you uh, just the end here. Okay. Yeah, those are beautiful. Yeah, they are. Well, great. So someone can go to your website and order the book from you if they're interested. Yeah. Yes. You can just go onto my website. And what I could do is um, for anyone who's listening to this, I can send a code to you that maybe you can post like a, a discount code um, okay. so get a discount on the book. Oh, that would oh, be great. Awesome. And then share it once more, like where people can find you. Um, yep, so on you can find me on Instagram. My handle is at Michelle Sakai Art. That's Michelle with two L's, M-I-C-H-E-L-L-E-S-A-K-H-A-I Art, A-R-T. And my website, Michelle sakai.com um well thank you so much for being with us yeah thank you so much for having me no i really i appreciate it it's been a lot of it's been nice